Good morning all, it's post bag and uh, this one's come in from Banggood and it is a mini camera. Now this has been sent to me really as part of a quadcopter system. Uh, the quadcopter is still on its way and of course the other thing I'd need uh, to put this in a quad is some sort of TV transmitter and also a receiver for the ground station. Um, but even without all those bits, we can still take a look at this thing, um, take a look at the waveforms that come out of it, and I think that'd be quite interesting. This is uh, a PAL. They did ask me if I wanted PAL or NTSC. For good reason, I've chosen PAL. That's uh, the TV system that we had in the UK. And uh, so in the box, we have the camera and this set of instructions or data, so that could be quite handy. And the camera itself is this. Wow, that's really tiny, isn't it? Very small. Let's get in a bit closer. So, uh, yes, this has a wide-angle lens. Uh, I think the data is 170 degrees. It certainly looks pretty fisheye. Uh, it's got a microphone on there. The four wires, now I'm guessing here, but they're probably 12 volts, uh, yellow for video, black for ground, and white for audio. Let's have a look at this thing on Banggood's website. So here it is, uh, it's SKU251677 and it's described as a 600 TV lines. Now, this is interesting, uh, of course this has 625 lines because it's PAL, but the effective resolution along a line is the equivalent of 600 TV lines, that's what that means. Uh, quarter inch, now I'm not, well that doesn't say inch, but quarter, that could be the CMOS sensor, the size of the CMOS sensor, 2.8 millimeters, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Uh, FPV, they're actually saying it's for first-person video uh, flight use. 170 degree wide-angle lens, PAL or NTSC, although you do have to specify that at the time of ordering. There may be a link on the board, but it's so tiny it would be uh, very hard to uh, adjust. So this is uh, £6.46, free shipping to the United Kingdom. Now I'm just interested in this quarter, uh, we've got references to quarter here, I assume it's quarter inch, it's not going to be quarter millimetre, is it? But there are no references on here to the 2.8 millimetre, so I'm not quite sure what that dimension refers to. Now just before I uh, continue, I just wanted to dig this thing out. This is a Vidicon, uh, it's made by EMI, or it was, many years ago. I worked in a factory for three weeks when I was in my teens to save up for this thing, I think it was £15. And uh, I also had to buy the scan coils, which was a huge bulky thing which sat around the outside of this. And then you had to have a lens to project the image onto the face here. And this uh, was a part of a TV camera project, which I was building in the 1970s. And of course, it was also black and white. So things have definitely moved on a bit. So what am I going to do with this? Well, I thought the first thing I'd do is connect it to this. This is an LCD TV. It's quite an old one. It's probably quite low resolution. I can't remember whether it's uh, 480 lines vertical or just 240, um, but we're not going to get the full resolution of this, but we will see the wideness of that wide angle lens and to some extent the uh, colour. Then I think I'll connect it to this, which is a wonderful old uh, black and white, well it's not black and white actually, it's black and green. It's a green screen computer monitor, uh, cathode ray tube of course. Now this will be interesting because this is not colour, it's got no colour circuits in it. I hope this isn't squashing the camera. Um, so what we should see is colour artefacts actually on top of the black and white signal. I'm hoping we'll see the 4.43 megahertz colour signal as a sort of row of dots or something like that. Uh, so I think that'll be quite interesting. And uh, then finally, oh dust, I think I'll put the output from the camera onto my scope. Now I'm pretty sure that this scope has a uh, TV trigger, so that means that we should be able to see the sync pulse uh, on here, the front and back porch, the colour burst, and all sorts of lovely bits of waveform uh, on the oscilloscope. Now this connector is not 0.1 inch pitch, uh, it's probably metric, it's, I think it's a JST connector but it's uh, one of the smaller ones. I'm not sure whether FPV equipment uh, has this connector but uh, I'm going to have to cut it off anyway and solder these four wires to some 0.1 inch pin headers 
And then I can use these connectors that I made up a while back for the on-screen display uh, board that I bought to put the 12 volts into the camera through that 2.1 and take the video out through this uh, phono connector, RCA, I think those, these are called. So here we go, chop that. And then I've got to find myself a little four pin header. So yellow is indeed video, uh, red is power. So I've connected a four pin header on here. Black has uh, straddled the middle two pins and I've got power and video. White is audio, I'm not gonna use that just for the moment. So uh, two way power splitter here. I'll put my solar power 12 volts in there. One of these will go into the TV cause that's 12 volts. And then the other one can go into my power socket for the camera. Well, now this is interesting. Uh, the camera's up here, blue tacked to the top of the monitor. Um, I put 12 volts on it and smoke started coming out and a rather alarming smell. So I'm now putting nine volts on it uh, via this PP3 or nine volt battery clip. And it sort of works, but it's a very noisy, strangely solarized or posterized image. That doesn't look quite right to me. And now it's uh, flickering and flashing and doing very strange things. Well, it's clearly working. I'm not sure whether the 12 volts has damaged it, but it is perfectly okay with 12 volts. Apparently power, 12 volts, one amp. Voltage range, five to 12 volts. I could try six volts, I guess. Well, now that's interesting. Uh, 4.8 volts here with four uh, nickel metal hydrides. And that's a pretty reasonable image. Let's get in a bit closer. Now, most of this uh, pixelation that you can see on there is actually the low resolution of my LCD monitor. Um, so I'm not sure that this is a 12 volt camera. It certainly didn't like 12 volts. Now let's check the wideness of the wide angle. Um, if I put my pliers there, uh, you can see that they're actually quite small on the screen and I have to open them out. It's quite tricky to do, get this on the screen. Uh, they're both points are still on the screen there. They're getting close to the edges. And yes, I mean, I would estimate that is almost 180 degrees. So 170 degrees seems about right. Very wide angle lens. Now, what about color? Well, here's something that's sort of blue. Uh, here's something that's kind of green. And uh, here's something that's sort of red. So the colors are coming through fine. Certainly a color camera. Now the camera module is really quite warm. In fact, I think next to the regulator, well, I think it's the regular regulator that I'm touching there. It's really quite hot and that's on five volts. So I don't think this thing is a 12 volt camera. I think if I'd left that 12 volts on for much longer, it would have cooked this thing. In fact, I think I'm quite lucky it's still working. Let's have a look at that regulator. So there's the regulator, it's down on the bottom right hand corner of the board. It looks like it says A to NK. You can see that the positive lead is connected directly to one of the pins of that. So I'm gonna see if I can look up A to NK and see if that is uh, okay with 12 volts going into it. Well, I can't find A to NK, but I've got an A to LL and it looks like the A2 is the 1.8 volt uh, regulator output is 1.8 volt the question is what's the maximum input voltage and the maximum input voltage is in fact 6.5 volts so if this is in fact the type of regulator that's on the board then it's not going to take 12 volts uh, and that's been borne out by my experience now I've just noticed that um, on Banggood's website in the listing or the page for this camera in the specifications they have actually marked in red here that the power supply range is 3.7 volts to 5 volts and not 5 volts to 12 volts. So you really do need to ignore uh, what's written on this little instruction leaflet that comes with it. And if I go down to the comments, um, someone here, Ruben, has actually said voltage correct, uh, specifications 5 to 12 volts. I've connected to 11 volts, so that would be a, a three cell pack and burned. Well, I very nearly did that myself, so uh, one to watch. Right, now let's connect the camera. Um, well, I've got a little RCA phono coupler there to my green, green screen CRT monitor. So let's 
plug that in and that comes on and that all works fine uh, again very wide angle fisheye let me see if I can hold that still now we will get strobing because of course the refresh rate of this monitor 50 hertz or 25 hertz or whatever it is and the camera are going to clash a little bit but uh, that certainly seems to work we've got the luminance signal coming through there now of course this monitor isn't using the color parts of the signal in any way but you can actually see them if you get in close so if you look closely uh, you've got these horizontal or slightly tilted over stripes it looks like well they are actually the 4.43 megahertz frequency of the color signal and uh, that's showing up actually in the luminance signal I mean this monitor has a very pure clean uh, raster scan line you can just see it there that's slightly uh, tilted over horizontal I'll get in even closer now if I disconnect the camera for a moment and uh, I've turned the brightness up a bit and I'll put the magnifying glass in front of the camera you can see how clean those scan lines are actually it's a bit murky because I think my brightness is very high but they're very um, pin sharp they're really well focused and it's when we put the video signal into that let's try doing that it's just pointing down at my board but you can now see that we've got almost like a crosshatch pattern we've got the horizontal component sorry about the flickering look away if that's going to bother you and we've got these vertical we've almost got squares there and uh, it, the vertical uh, lines are the color signal well that works but it's a bit flickery so I'm now going to switch to the oscilloscope and we'll see what waveforms come out of this camera. So I've connected the camera to my scope but I'm getting a very disappointing uh, trigger here. Um, this scope is terribly reflective, it's very difficult to film. Um, so what I'm going to do is freeze the image. Uh, you can see some uh, elements here. Uh, I think I've got this too far stretched out. So yes, here's the video signal frozen. Now this is on uh, line sync. So it's picking up the line sync pulse here. So this is one TV line. You can see the video sort of coming up and then going back down towards the end of the line. So it must be brighter in the middle of the image than it is at the edge. But what I was trying to pick out was this thing just after the sync pulse, which is the color burst. Let's try and expand that out. And if I remember my color TV theory from years ago, uh, this is 10 cycles of 4.43 megahertz and what that does is enables the color circuits in the TV to lock on with respect to phase and then of course the phase of the uh, signal in the actual video here let's turn that back a bit determines the actual color so it's the relative phase of this stuff here relative to the color burst um, signal that comes I think this is called the front porch just after the uh, the line sync pulse. But there's obviously quite a lot of noise creeping into my signal here because if I expand out the 10 cycles of color burst they're not exactly very sinusoidal it's all a bit of a mess quite frankly. But anyway there is uh, the video signal coming out of the camera, sync pulse of video and the color burst there. Uh, so there it is there's Banggood's uh, little tiny mini wide angle lens camera now you can see from my cutting mat that uh, it looks like it's about half an inch square. Yeah, that would be about 12.5 millimeters, maybe 13. Um, I didn't test the audio, but I'm sure that microphone has perfectly acceptable quality. Of course, you'd have to protect it from uh, wind to stop wind noise getting in there. And uh, the picture quality looks acceptable. Uh, I can only judge by my low resolution LCD monitor, but uh, taking that into account, it did look reasonably good. But uh, I'd certainly appreciate some help on this A2NK. It would be worth uh, confirming whether or not this is a 6.5 volt maximum input uh, LDO regulator. So that's A2NK. Now, just a quick look at the uh, circuit board here. Apart from the regulator top right, the main chip appears to be an HK24C16. Uh, next to that is a 27 meg uh, quartz crystal. Now there's another chip down at the bottom there. It's near the microphone. It's called an X1. I'm just wondering whether that's a microphone preamp, possibly. So there it is. Uh, nice camera, from what I can tell, but do watch your input voltage. Cheerio.